What's up guys, hope everyone is doing well. In this video I'm going to be presenting um, cases for both the bullish scenarios and the bearish scenarios when it comes to the near future for Bitcoin. By near future I mean roughly, uh, you know, a year to two years from now, no later than roughly 2025. I think in general as I've been saying recently that um, whatever path of the many paths I've shown in my recent videos that Bitcoin will take in terms of seeing a bull market, I don't think it'll happen any later, meaning we'll top out no later than 2025. Um, although there are still some people, um, a lot of bear, I mean, most people are probably are actually bearish right now. Um, and then uh, to the most severe and intense side of that, there's still a number of people projecting on charts that we're going to go down. The Bitcoin's going to go down too. Nine, you know, ten thousand. Um, generally, twelve to nine thousand is the rough range. I think just to be on as unbiased as possible here and objective, because I mean anything can happen at the end of the day. Um, so I do think if let's say if things were to go down, I think twelve, ten thousand, approximately, would be the lowest it would go, um, which pertains to this pink path that I have on here. If we do see a downside, let's say we end up losing this. Um, trend line range right here that I have. And I'll go over the past history of that as well um, here in a moment. It'll say we lose this because it's been very important um, since roughly 20,000 and onward for Bitcoin. We, we lose it going below around basically going down to around 23,000, maybe we come up and get rejected and we see a massive crash. I think if Bitcoin is going to set new lows, whether it's, you know, just down to 13, maybe just to 12, maybe it goes to 7,000. I mean, for all I know, for all anybody knows, you know, terrible things could happen um, and it could, you know, crash to zero. I mean, that's totally possible. I mean, is it likely or quite likely? I, I don't think it's really likely at all. I think it's borderline impossible, but not even fully impossible. But if we do get some sort of bearish downside, meaning the bull market or the bear market did not set its load back here around November 50.4 thousand approximately, then I think it's going to be something rather quick. I don't think that if the bear market continues here that we will see something along these lines where we'll kind of just slowly bleed down into like mid next year or even the very towards the very end of next year. I just don't think that makes much sense. Um, plenty of data is showing that this has been, this has, I mean, it's been the longest bear market. Makes sense because we are further on out in Bitcoin's progression. And so I'm becoming a lot weaker, you know, it's getting older. Um, as an analogy, I mean, when humans get older, they just become less efficient. It's decaying. It's just it's struggling a lot more than it had been or was in the past. And um, I mean, that could be possible for that reason towards the bearish, towards the downside. But I don't think that makes much sense, again, because we have already seen a longer bear market than the previous ones. We have gone down. Uh, we've retraced to the downside less than the previous bear markets, which that has also been a trend as Bitcoin has aged. Each bear market has been... Uh, in terms of the percentage drawdown after setting a bull market high, it's been less severe um, so, uh, in subsequent bear markets. Um, so, I mean, we've met the lengthening and the um, less severe bear markets. We've met those two um, criteria that Bitcoin seems to be showing over a longer period of time. Uh, this range I have on here, these horizontal white lines, lines up with the, this is when the, it's, a, uh, it's macro, roughly two year, two year falling wedge, falling triangle, I've been going over for quite some time. This is when the support and the resistance converge in on each other. Um, this is fairly inconsequential, um, but does happen to line up with where I, what I think is most likely if it were to actually go to the downside, um, which I don't in general need to, that it would happen. We'd set the low, um, no later than roughly into this year. Maybe it leads into 2024, like maybe just into January, maybe into February, but for all intents and purposes, if we go down, I think it'll basically be set in by the end of this year. Whatever type of bull market we get, I personally think, so if you're familiar with my content, that we're going to see something similar to how I behaved after March of 2020, but due to my phase cycle theory, we're in cycle three of Bitcoin. We are in phase one. We're about three, roughly three fourths done. As soon as Bitcoin sets the upcoming high, 
Um, assuming it takes a similar path to this turquoise one, I don't think it's going to be, and I'm not saying it's going to be exactly like this fractal I have on here, but I'm just using this to draw out my picture in the best manner. But I think, it, like I said, it's going to be similar to this. It'll be a quick rapid move up to, I think, at highest 250, 245,000 approximately. And then uh, in general, the range I think is maybe 180 to 250,000 approximately for the upside. Um, but in general, outside of my specific bias for my specific evidences and reasoning, I think that Bitcoin, whatever path is taken, as I've gone over many different paths that the upcoming bull market could take in recent videos, I don't think it'll, Bitcoin will take longer than the then 2025 to set the next bull market high. I think the next high in general will happen sometime next year or sometime in 2025. I think it'll personally line up with uh, the halving range of next year. Um, or April, May, might, the, the top range might start a little bit before that, those three months and might and it might end a little bit after those three months. But I think roughly that Bitcoin will set its next top and its next range high um, within that rough range of the halving. I think we will deviate from the sentiment of the prior halvings being bullish because Bitcoin is being decayed. It's becoming less, like I was going over earlier, less efficient. Uh, it's something that is has a dynamic um, attribute to it over uh, when you take something like the halving that's happening every four years, roughly 210,000 um, uh, blocks for, for Bitcoin. Um, something like that overlaid upon something that is dynamic. You have static on top of something that's dynamic. Eventually, at some point, I think Bitcoin is bound to throw a curveball, and I think this one will be it for the halvings, which is why I think that the top was going to line up with the upcoming halving. Um, for these colored boxes right here, so this upper one is yellow one clearly, is where we already bottomed out at. Um, the orange box is from basically 14 to 12,000, and then the red is from 11.5 to 9.5 thousand. I think this is basically the lowest we could go again. Um, the idea of this video is to kind of present as many uh, points of evidence and reasoning for both the bull and the bear um, to be objective and as unbiased as possible. Um, from what I've seen, like on Twitter and other other places, I haven't seen anybody entertaining it going lower than basically approximately 9,000. And seeing 9,000 is basically, those are wick lows. I don't think we will like close around 9,000 and maybe wick down like eight, 7,000. I mean, it could happen. I mean, like I said, anything it could happen. And I know, by no means do I think my specific projection or anything I think for that matter really is correct. Um, it's just what I generally have some sort of faith and belief in because I think it makes the most sense most likely. But um, outside of that, so I want to just quickly point out this, this ascending trend zone that I have going all the way back to August 2017. Each of these arrows, these blue ones you can see are pointing out the where we saw some sort of resistance or support. Um, one, uh, one that I do want to point out specifically is this one right here. You can see leading into the like halfway into this bear market 2018, you can see we just kept finding support, no significant bounce from it. But then as soon as we um, closed below it, and then this was a torrential downpour from there into the bear market low of 2018, 2019, you see how important it was right here, leading into the March crash after the March crash, which leads me into, you see how we come up right here, May, June, finding resistance, and we finally break above it, and we find support right here, August, September, October. And that is what we're doing right here as well. We're coming down from this, these double tops right here with that bearish divergence that I've been pointing out recently. We're coming down and we are in, not in the zone yet, but we are uh, could be entering it. We could come into it. We could not. We could you know, just stay right above it. But nonetheless, we are coming down to this exact same trend zone um, during August, September, October like we did back here. And according to my phase cycle theory and my specific projection, um, this is basically uh, in terms of uh, history and how things are going. I mean, we're basically, this purple circle is synonymous to this pur purple circle right here. Um, according to my theory, once again, um, when we go back to uh, right here, this is so from right here, November 2013 to December 2017, this was... Um, Phase two of cycle two for Bitcoin. We can see on the other side down here, we have this trend line. We come seeing the entire bear market right here. Finally break above it. We break our yellow line, roughly RSI value 50. And we can see we're basically using it. Obviously, it's not a perfect support. I mean, we did dip a little bit right here, a little bit below it. But you can clearly see that basically what was done here is something along these lines. We came up and we just continued to chop in this bullish range throughout the bull market. Um, we can see we finally came down right here. Again, rough support with respect to that line. Uh, bull market continued and it also happened 
August, September, October as well. We can go to this area right here. This is uh, from right here, 2017. This $20,000 approximately high we set um, up until our current time. This is uh, phase one of cycle three. We can see drawing it with respect to these two highs right here, leading on March crash. We did the exact same thing. We're in some sort of bear trend, downtrend, broke above it, support, support right here in this yellow or green circle. Again, we're seeing August, September, October. And then the bull market ensued. If we do it with our most recent bear market, again, we're seeing our trend line. We are seeing um, your bearish behavior. When we break above, we're just chopping above it. We come down. We've tested it for the first time since we broke out of the RSI downtrend. Again, September, August, September, October. And this goes like I just went over. It goes all the way back to um, phase two, cycle two, all the way back to 2013. Pretty much all throughout the history of Bitcoin as I will um, get on a little bit later on other charts. Um, outside of that, there's a number of indicators I'm going to go over. I mean, let's look at this MACD. We have a cross bearish. I don't really think that's anything significant. Um, I mean, let's just say to entertain the bear side, perhaps this is, you know, we got this bear cross, we're going to lose this trend zone that I pointed out, and we're going to see something like this pink path, or maybe we'll even see something, you know, drawn out, like I said, like I don't think is likely whatsoever, but it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And I think if anything, what I think this is, is we're just going to see a brief bearish crossing, and basically you could look at it as the last washed out before the bull run, just a quick retracement towards the downside you know maybe wells want to get their you know bitcoin for the cheap think about blackrock and all the etfs in general that have been set in there's a deadline in, in october for them the last deadline is sometime i think it's like mm, it's sometime first quarter of next year i don't remember the specific month but it's soon uh, in all intents and purposes when it comes to the market at least i mean even if we look down here at this Bear versus bull power indicator. Again, we'll see something similar. This trend line right here came down, broke out. We're just straddling it right here. Likely, I think we're just going to eventually break this with strength towards the upside, similar to how we did back here as well. Um, if we go to this indicator right here, um, as I've been going over, and I'll touch on it here shortly, but the uptrend we've been seeing since we broke out of this macro flying wedge back here, we tested it, found support back in March of this year has been it's we've been in an 11 month approximately uptrend we're seeing bearish divergence and hidden bullish divergence which signals an uptrend continuation we saw it throughout from around 400 dollars to twenty thousand dollars when bitcoin had that bull run in phase two of cycle two um and we're in this kind of you know falling triangle pattern right here that we could be breaking out of soon to go along with the bullish case here if we look here at this indicator we can see that just to kind of indicate the, the absolute lows here. If we go all the way back to 2018 right here, we can see in the channel on this indicator, we hit the low back here and we hit the low as well back in um, July. So it's not precisely upon the actual absolute low, but nonetheless, uh, we can what we can take away from this is that we ranged in Bitcoins, the bear market low range for Bitcoin from June 2022 from into November 2022 from around 20,000 to 15,000 approximately. You see that we've clearly broken up here. And as long as we can maintain above this pink line right here, there's really no reason to think that we're gonna see some sort of drastic downside, uh, making lower lows and things along that uh, that scenario. Um, so this is the daily chart. I've been going over a lot recently. I've added some things on here. This is the 11 month uptrend after breaking out of the macro falling wedge. Like I said, we're seeing that bearish divergence indicated right here with the red box, hidden bullish divergence throughout the entire thing. Um, really specifically just from this low range right here all the way to the recent low we set. Um, like I said, that signal that signals an uptrend continuation um, in general as a rule of thumb. And then also going back in Bitcoin's history, like I've mentioned, we've seen this plenty of times in the past. Um, let's say right here, zooming in, we lose this downside we've been in right here. Um, we can't eventually kind of break above some of this pattern on here, above these two red dash trend lines uh, that are of the 31.7 thousand wick right here, these two areas. And then the second one right here, really just with respect to this recent drop we've seen setting these local lows. 
Um, if we take out the RSI, we can see we're in some sort of uptrend right here. I drew this uptrend range with specific respect to this double bottom we set right here when the RSI in this in this downtrend we've been seeing this right here. You can see that we touched it going all the way back to 15.4 thousand. We touched it right here in March when we hit around 20,000. We touched it again recently when we hit approximately 25.5 thousand roughly. Um, but didn't come down and touch it um, just yet. So, I mean, for all intents and purposes, we could continue to stagger down here. Maybe we'll see the RSI come down and touch it, and then that will can act as the continuation of the uptrend here. Um, but even if we take a look here at the MACD, you can see that we, uh, in this uptrend, we've been seeing some long down just a little bit above the lowest low back here at 15.4 thousand. We have seen a bullish cross here, so we could continue to kind of go sideways a little bit and then eventually break the zero point of the MACD and then have something similar like this blue path. And this blue path will then continue on to the blue path I have here on this chart where we enter the bull market. We've basically been setting the last local lows within this range. We've been going sideways, slightly down in recently. Uh, and this is basically, like I've said in my one of my videos, that this is assuming we don't see more bearish downside, don't make any lower lows, etc. We don't lose 24,000. Start closing below that on the daily, then we are most likely going to continue moving towards the up upside. And this is basically the last best moment to buy Bitcoin before the next bull market high. Um, if we look here at this indicator, this is the, I don't even remember. Anyways, it's not really important. You can see that also with this recent swing low was also comparative to the lowest low we set back here. Again, 15.4 thousand. This is one of the main reasons why I believe this is the last final best time to buy. Again, we could for all intents and purposes go lower, but I do think this is uh, running at a time. I think in the next month or two, the decision will be made, um, perhaps even a little bit earlier, next maybe you know two or three weeks, perhaps. Um, this specific pattern up here goes all the way out to the end of this month, and basically once October sets off, maybe maybe first week in October, a little bit later, then we start to break these trend lines, and then we head back up towards 30, 31, 32, where we break 33,000. Like I said, that's a very important value. I've been going over recently. Looking at this indicator down here, this is a, uh, has to do with some sort of volatility index. I forget what these acronyms are, so forgive me. Um, but anyways, again, we can see the same thing kind of happening here in this low range of this uptrend. This is when we actually went lower than we did back uh, in November when we hit 15.4 thousand. I think once we actually break this median right here, this yellow range, again, that will probably start to signify with the fact that we're breaking these red dash trend lines I went over up here. So moving into this chart on the six day chart, this is what I was talking about in my most recent community tab post. Um, I've been going over these triangles right here a lot recently. Um, this first triangle is the W of phase one. The third triangle is the W of phase one for cycle three. First one was of cycle two. The second triangle right here, the falling wedge, the falling triangle, is the uh, bear market of cycle two's phase two, as I've already mentioned on the other chart. Then we go to the fourth one right here. This is the falling wedge or falling triangle of the retracement that in the uh, the past cycle we saw back here from roughly April 2013 down into you know pushing July August September until we finally went up towards the upside. Um, the reason why this one is so much longer than this one is because again, like I said, Bitcoin's decaying, it's maturing. We're seeing lengthening cycles, phases within the cycles are lengthening, etc. So on and so forth. Um, but again, another thing to point out is you can see once we were breaking this. We set our low back here in July of 2013, started to move up into August, September, October, and then we carry on the bull market, which is again, is cyclically speaking, synonymous to the bull market we're heading into. Um, but even if we go all the way back to the beginning of Bitcoin, we can see that this begins in October of 2009. So we're having August, September, October, you know, there's a little low set right here in December, January, 2009, 2010, January, 2010. And then that bull market began. This would be the first cycle for Bitcoin from the lowest low to around $33 in 2011. Again, from here in June 2011 to 
right here, 20,000, December 2017, that's cycle two. And then from our right here, December 2017, roughly 20,000 to our current time. We're in phase one of cycle three. Um, the next upcoming top will be at the end of phase one of cycle three. And we can see that just going all the way back and to uh, basically the entirety of Bitcoin's history, second um, cycle, we can see our triangle right here. We're breaking out, finding support on the triangle, August, September, October. We can go to this one right here, doing the exact same thing, August, September, October. We see our next W triangle right here, doing the exact same thing right here. As I already went over on the other charts, back in 2020, September or August, September, October, bull market ensued. Most recent falling triangle, falling wedge. We've already broken out of it. We found support, as I've been saying. And now we're heading into the first August, September, October after we broke out of this triangle. It denoted again, uh, pretty obviously here, these vertical white ranges. Um, and on top of that, that I, I think something that you, even uh, further confirms and affirms this as being a significant uh, temporal trend is the fact that the halfway point in between each of these um, white ranges lines up with April 1st. We go right here, 2022, April 1st. We go right here, uh, April 2018, April 1st. We right here, 2014, April 1st. And then right here, 2011, April 1st. Um, even We're even seeing another similar or a confluence uh, with the time we can see this, like I said in one of my previous videos, the first and the third triangle, cyclically speaking, are synonymous. And the second and the fourth triangle, cyclically speaking, in terms of the pattern that they form, being the falling wedge, are synonymous. But the downside of the second triangle is the bear market of phase two, whereas this fourth triangle right here is the uh, lengthen of the decayed retracement that we saw back here, like I said, from April 2013 to around July, August of 2013. Um, but what I was saying was, so we can see right here, so I'll get the highlighter out just to more clearly show this. So, drawing, so not, uh, there's uh, these right here are synonymous. And then we see from this point to this one right here, it was a gap of, um, let's see. So September, 2012 to September, 2015, that's three years. We fast forward to the one that's synonymous. We jump ahead again, three more years. We're seeing, again, it's not the same point or segment period of time uh, in terms of the cycles, but we see uh, the same time period, three years, we're seeing the same falling wedge, falling triangle, and we're breaking out again, August, September, October. Um, again, we'll, we'll lead into what I think is most likely, like I said, a quick bull run, lining up with the topping out around the halving of next year, around 180,000, 250,000. This right here shows the, like I was going over earlier, we go back to 2015 to 2017 cycle twos phase two bull run um like i was saying right here we see these hidden bullish divergences bearish divergences signaling the uptrend continuation despite the bearish divergences that is what we see right here currently we saw a bearish divergence we're seeing hidden bullish divergence along this entire uptrend we go back to um 20,000 to 15 approximately 20,000 to 15,000, the uh, bear market low range we set from June of 2022 to November 2022. We can see we got a bullish divergence right here as we were in the over historically oversold territory that has lined up with every single Bitcoin bottom going all the way back to November, October 2011. When it comes to the uh, the months, September historically is a, has been a bearish month uh, in terms of the fact that it's for most of the months going all the way back to uh, in Bitcoin's history has been uh, maybe seeing like, I think it was at most maybe 15, 20%. And that was only like one month out of the last like 14. But for the most part, September's are typically bearish to the degree of like five, you know, three to 10%. Um, but the way that I look at it is the fact that if you, you know, really take a look at that, September is kind of the last month where you see just very low bearish volatility and then October, November, December, so on and so forth is when Bitcoin like I've already been going over on this chart and other charts leads into the bull run, pretty much going all the way back in Bitcoin's history. Um, but this indicator right here, I think is uh, you know, highly or not highly, but uh, really, really good. If anybody does want to use it, it's on RSI. It's called divergence. 
indicator that denotes the actual all these divergences that are on here that are very very helpful like i mean it like i said pointed out the most recent bullish divergence uh, from 20,000 to 15,000. It, pull, it pointed out the bullish divergence right here back in 2015 as we broke out of this falling triangle. I mean, it's very, very good. These are the inputs that I use uh, that I think is the best, um, you know, divergence indicators on the actual RSI itself. Um, but if we take a look here, at this indicator, um, what I find interesting here is if we actually zoom in, we can see that this pink range down here, you can see we've only ever entered it going back to 2015. So one, two, three, four, and then most recently with the with the recent local low that we set, like I was going over on the other charts, how um, this recent local low that we saw on the chart going, zoom in here on the weekly down to uh, you know, 25,000 approximately, this entered the same range that Bitcoin did when it was worth around 17,000. Um, Bitcoin's price is so much higher, yet many indicators are going lower than it did when it, the price was lower in the past. If we go back to these other recent instances where this happened, the other time we entered this range uh, was back in 2018 when we set the low right here, was um, roughly, the March crash didn't quite go into it, but it almost did. We go all the way back here we can see that we roughly entered it right here again breaking out of this falling triangle into this august september october range i've been pointing out um if we look here at the macd um, we can see that we saw again bearish or bullish divergence right here historically we're seeing basically the same thing if we go back here to 2018 wasn't really a bullish divergence here because the price didn't uh, suit it, but you can see we start to see this tapering up of the MACD. The Bollinger Bands on here are very, very squeezed inwards. We see something more similar to currently right here back in uh, February 15, 2015, October 2015. As I've gone over plenty of times in recent videos, when it comes to the overall, which is why the second and the fourth triangle are both flying wedges, the harmonics of this second triangle and this fourth triangle are essentially the same where we see this initial downside. We see this one M right here leading into first bear market low. Then we see a sideways M right here. Initial downside, two M's. This is what we saw right here recently. Initial downside, first M, second M leading into 15,000. Uh, you can see they clearly look different, but they are essentially the same thing. Like I said, initial downside, two M's, bear market's over. We enter into a bear to bull transition, some sort of uptrend until we finally begin the actual bull market leading into the end of things. Um, so here, lastly, the last chart I'm going to go over, this is the 12 month chart, the yearly chart. And we can see going all the way back to zoom out here real quick. So we had right here, this was the ending right here of the first cycle for Bitcoin. Then we, um, had this candle right here in 2013 when we pushed or when bitcoin pushed 1200 this was an end a uh, phase high uh, we see we have as the pattern here each of these dots we can see starting in each of these candle highs which are each of these yellow ones right here we go out we saw purple red green the fourth one Starting so one, two, three, four, broke the previous high. They're right here, yellow, purple, red, green. One, two, three, four, broke the previous candle phase um, or cycle high. Uh, do the same thing right here with a recent one, 64 or roughly 69, 70,000. We see yellow, purple, red, and then this would be projecting or predicting that the next candle will at lowest, according to the measurements that I took in the past ones go to around 50, let's just say 50 to 55 to 60,000. It could um, maybe 142,000. And like I said, at highest, I think 250,000 approximately is most reasonable. And then in general, I think it will, we'll see some sort of range between 180,000, 250,000. Um, but the fact that this is, I mean, this is essentially the strongest thing that I've gone over in this video. I, I mean, I personally, like I was talking about my community post, I think this right here is essentially all one should need in order to realize that 
at the very least, because obviously none of this is absolutely conclusive. Uh, I mean, I, like I, I said already, I, I don't not, I do not know what is going to happen. Um, for all intents and purposes, things could fall below 15,000, you know, four days from now, uh, after I post this video. But I mean, this chart right here to me is just so strong. The fact that going all the way back to really when this first triangle began in 2011, February 2011, each and every single one of these uh, phases within these cycles printing these same exact type of triangles and it's leading into August, September, October at the end of every single one of these four triangles and then the bull market ensues. I don't think that's something to kind of see or scoff at or look over. Um, and then on top of that, with this chart being the yearly chart, I mean, when it comes to higher time frames, you're always going to be the most viable, the most solid to draw some sort of evidential conclusion from in terms of projecting the price as some sort of asset. I mean, I think this is just, you know, massive, really. Um, there was one other thing that I wanted to go over. I may not even have it on here. Oh, actually, no, I decided not to go over that chart in this video. Anyways, um... So that really was all mainly for the actual analysis of this video. Um, like I was saying, the thesis of this video was just basically trying to come to the conclusion through all the evidence and the data, um, whether or not a bull market or a bear market is more and most likely. Uh, again, I'm trying to say this as objectively and unbiased as possible. I mean, if I were to have, you know, if I were to actually have been keeping up with some sort of, you know, a T-chart right here throughout the video, this side being, um, you know, left side being bull, right side being bare, I think there's far, you know, far more points of reason, you know, for the bull market on the left than it is for the bear market on the right. Again, at the end of the day, realistically, both of them are just as likely, but, you know, just kind of be fair about things because anything can happen. But like I was saying, you take in all of this data, you look at all those indicators, the plethora of indicators that I've not only gone in this video, gone over in this video, but I've gone over in recent videos, uh, the data really just seems to uh, point towards the fact that we are going to see um, the local low set in soon in the next maybe month, month and a half. Maybe we've already seen it. Um, I mean, as this chart kind of shows, I think we're basically I'll go to this chart instead. I think we're basically going to see some maybe stagger, maybe go a little bit lower, slightly sideways. Basically, the orientation we've been in since we you know printed this purple candle that we see here on this chart back in. Uh, around the 17th of August. Um, and then we'll finally, you know, continue this breakout towards the upside. I mean, on top of that, as I went over one of my recent videos, going back to what I think is, in terms of my cycle theory, we saw this uptrend right here. We had this very brief Ichimogi, uh, Ichimoki, uh, is it Ichimoki? Ichimoku. I was saying that so wrong in the last video. Wow. Ichimoku cloud cross right here. Just briefly, then we cross back above. This is the six day chart and we've seen the same thing right here. It's a little bit lengthier, um, which I think, you know, obviously I think that makes perfect sense with the fact that, like I've been saying, Bitcoin's maturing, it's decaying. Um, these patterns that you're going to see on here are going to last a little bit longer, but, you know, there's still some sort of uh, like archetypal, uh, just kind of like model, uh, just, you know, general uh, pattern that it is following is going to look a little bit different over time, obviously, but uh, on top of that, uh, when, it, when it comes to the actual, uh, like the people that I've seen on Twitter or whatever else, uh, saying the Bitcoin's going to go down to, at lowest I've seen, like I said, 10, 9, 10 to 9,000. Every person that I have seen that thinks that, and the majority of people right now are still bearish, which you know is also another reason to kind of think that it's leaning towards the bullish side, because typically what the majority thinks doesn't usually end up happening. Um, but like I was saying, a lot of the people that I'm seeing projecting new bear market lows onto the charts um, are only using like trend lines or denoting, you know, the fact that we, for example, um, we've set some, let's say we set a double top right here. And now due to, uh, I don't know, some random trend line that, I'm, that I could draw on here that I'm not going to draw on here. You know, some just random trend line just happens to line up with hitting, you know, nine, ten thousand, you know, beginning of next year. And that's basically what I'm seeing is the only people I see projecting ten to nine thousand are just saying this is a double top. We're gonna come down to this trend line, which is my only point of reasoning or evidence, and we're gonna set some sort of double bottom along this trend line that's drawn, you know, from wherever, who knows. 
I mean, you could I could draw so many different trend lines on here that would line up with Bitcoin heading down with the possibility of Bitcoin heading down to 10 to 9,000. But at the end of the day, if you're only using trend lines and you're only calling out that this may be a double top that leads into a double bottom at 10 to 9,000, and then you just don't even include, you know, a MACD or, you know, some sort of RSI, stochastic RSI, you know, all of the other indicators that I went over on each of these charts. Like I said, I don't remember <laughs> what some of these are. Like I said, I mean, this is some sort of relative uh, volume based index, index right here. This is, I literally do not remember what this ac acronym means. I went, this is a bear bull power indicator. I mean, when you actually take a look and all a plethora of indicators, uh, you know, these macro patterns on here, this temporal confluence, everything that I've gone over in this video that I'm kind of just reiterating, you know, pointlessly at this point. Everything seems to most likely point to the fact that we've already set our low at 15.4 thousand. We have been in a bear to bull transition and in general, Bitcoin is going to most likely that a new top within 2024 or 2025, as I've gone over, I have my specific projection. Um, but like I said, I mean, I don't think anything is going to happen no later than 2025, but um, that was all that I want to go over in this video. So hopefully you enjoyed, hope you're able to learn something. Again, none of this is financial advice uh, and none of this is absolutely conclusive as that was really kind of the point of this video to show that, I mean, anything can happen, but Logically and reasonably speaking, there really doesn't seem much reason to see any good reason to think that Bitcoin is going to go lower than 50.5 thousand. Um, all that being said, everything gone over. I hope you all have a blessed day.